What people don't get is race cars are two different cars with two different limits and you can die from going too slow. In today's episode of Piston Fury, I'm going to be talking about what makes race cars so hard to drive and so mind-blowingly, insanely crazy fast. This is a speed to grip chart. The speed going right, the grip going up. And as you can see in the grip, there's a dip. And this is called a window. I'm going to explain all of this throughout the video. So watch till the end and be enlightened. But to begin all of this, I need to explain alignment. A circle angle gets sharper and sharper the smaller the circle gets. A car has four wheels. And when you're going around a corner or going around a roundabout, your car has a turning circle. And taking the corner, there's inside wheels and outside wheels. That means the inside wheels have a smaller turning circle than the outside wheels. So the inside front wheel needs more steering angle. But bruh, there's only one steering wheel. Yes, I know that. So let me explain a clever thing invented. It's called toe. It's where you align your wheels offset on an outside direction. So your right wheel is going to be pointing a little bit right and your left wheel is going to be pointing a little bit left. This is what you call outside toe. Inside toe would be the total opposite. What this outside toe does is align your inside wheels to the smaller turning circle it would be taking. It makes the wheels work in harmony. Except it's just not that great on a straight road. That's the part where you only want your wheels going straight and it can make the car necessarily twitchy. But there's also inside toe that provides more stability. You know, it's good for when your mom's driving. But what does this have to do with race cars? Well, I'm gonna explain. You would expect that race cars prefer to have outside toe, working in harmony with the turning circles, giving more engagement, quicker turn in, and all of this good stuff. But actually, race cars perform at a much higher limit than your little Miata. Race cars possess aggressive inside toe, front and rear, most of the time. I can safely say all of the time. This is because when they take corners at such high speed, the car naturally wants to lean because of all the car's weight. The inertia is pulling it to lean on the outside tires and give them all the grip, which means the inside tires, they don't possess as much grip as the outside tires, so they can't hold on the road as strong. They just can't turn as sharp. So outside toe would actually be a bad idea. So for them to still help the car to turn into the corner through the corner and exiting the corner this is where inside toe is useful because now the inside tires with slightly less grip than the outside tires can steer at a slightly less aggressive steering angle so with the little grip they have they can still steer the car and this brings a little more stability because race cars have a very very small margin for error so this is good for stability, but also extremely good for speed. Driving at the limit, this makes you able to go faster, more aggressive, and corner at sublime speeds. But you see the thing is, this creates an illusion for newbie drivers who are not going fast enough. They legitimately think the car is understeering, they think it's slow, they think it's unbalanced and trash trying to get to the limit of what they think it is but not going fast enough because at lower speed when the car isn't leaning as much on the outside tires the inside tires are going against the steering input of the outside tires this is all creating a clash making the car understeer the inside toe is not doing its job properly it's not meant to be there at that low speed it's meant for high speed true speed and so you say this is the limit of the car it's terrible it's understeering <coughs> it's not you just not a fast driver but then there's a little window past that part where you think it's the limit past that stage of understeering but still before the glorious part of true speed where the toe is useful that little window is the place where you crash because even though you are leaning a little bit more than low speed so you would think the toe is a bit more useful now right uh, well you're still not leaning enough and your inside wheel is still going against your outside wheel you're gonna crash even worse this is snap understeer that's the result of this but once you've got enough lean oh baby you're speeding 
and this comes a lot in race cars a window where you crash a speed killing window that's what i'm going to call it because below that you're safe above that you're safe but in that window you're not safe like i said in the beginning a race car is two different cars with two different limits same principle with the next thing i'm going to be talking about that's also part of alignment and it's called camber you see when you're taking a corner at such high speed and the car is leaning greatly on the outside tires that leaning will cause your tire contact patch to drift to the outside part of the tire and if you're a maniac you can manage to get it so far that you're driving on your rim <laughs> <laughs> and there's this little thing called camber that is very very useful and good for this so taking this high speed corner and your car starts leaning a little bit of negative camber means the wheels are offset slightly slanted with the bottom of the wheel the part that's touching the road slightly more outside and the top part is slightly more inside this is negative camber and it gives superb grip for when you are leaning greatly at high speed cornering it helps you keep all the grip you have on your tires so that you don't start riding on your rim i am scarecrow you know how i became a successful public speaker i was outstanding in my field ha 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 lol laugh at my joke so i don't get fired now you might think that it's best to have a constantly changing camber that provides a consistent big contact patch through the turns as well as on the straights meaning no negative camber on the straights but actually in the name of speed and tire wear, it is good to have negative camber on the straights, at least in the front. Because when there is negative camber on the straights, the tires have a smaller contact patch that is on the inside part of the tire, keeping the outside and middle part of the tire fresh off the road reserved for the turns. It's a mechanical tactic for tire management, but there is also a bonus. The smaller your contact patch, the less frictional force, the more speed. And as it doesn't have the same aggressive after effect as aggressive toe, but if you're bad enough, it can have the same death window impact. And you go off the road, crash into a tree, and you die. These are my own words. Jesse did not give me a script. But when you learn to race fast and take these corners at such high speed, negative camber is one of the things you love the most. It's one of your best friends. But this isn't as aggressive as the next thing I'll be talking about. Downforce! The greatest of all time grip enhancer added to a car. Anything with wheels actually, because it's also on motorbike. It's on everything. It is weight without inertia. So this thing will bury your tires into the road, enhancing your contact patch to be so big, you have so much grip. But you don't have a whole lot of inertia, you don't have a whole lot of momentum from all this weight. So you can drive like you're a feather glued to the road. How downforce works? Downforce is made using body work and wings and all to push the air up, using the air resistance to push the car down. Thus adding more weight without inertia. But you see there's a catch, downforce doesn't come for free. You need to have a level of air resistance. You need to have enough air aggressively pushing down on that rear wing or split or car knot or whatever it is to produce enough downforce that is actually useful. So you need to be at a certain speed to actually feel the downforce. To actually benefit from that aftermarket rear wing you just added to your Miata. So the higher the speed you go, the more downforce you get, the faster you can take corners. So you're speeding down the track, you're a little scared but also excited and you think let me take this corner a little faster because the rear wing will provide me enough grip. I mean right now I don't have enough grip but the rear wing will be just fine. <laughs> you are setting yourself up for a death trap because afterwards when you crash you will have to tell the police I crashed because I wasn't going fast enough. It's the same principle. There's a window. Before the downforce is useful, you are only depending on your mechanical grip, how sticky your tires are, the weight of the actual car, the weight of the engine, the chassis, everything. But there comes a time when you go so fast that the mechanical grip, the stickiness of the tires is just not enough on its own. And the inertia of the car wants to push the car to go wide, to understeer or oversteer. But you are still not going fast enough for there to be downforce. You need to go faster for the air to push harder on your rear wing so that you can have enough downforce to take the corner faster. Two different cars, two different limits. A crazy interesting thing in racing is the condition of the air. 
I'm not talking about how windy it is on the day. Yes, that can affect the car. But when you're going at such high speeds, I mean, you're creating your own wind pushing against yourself. What I'm talking about is clean air, tow and dirty air. So when you're just driving alone, speeding down the road, there's a lot of air beating on your car, giving you enough downforce. But when you're tucked right behind the driver, all the air is going onto his car creating the downforce and he's having to deal with all the air resistance. Whereas you tucked in right behind him, you don't have a whole lot of air. It's like you being sucked into a lack of air resistance. And in that way, you can go faster because you have no air resistance. But then when you come to the corner, that's when you want to get beside him and not be behind him because then you'll just have no downforce. This is exactly why you have to know your car. You have to know the car you're driving and you need to know the science of all of this. So you welcome for this video. Now you are enlightened. I hope you enjoyed this video of Piston Fury. Science of race cars explained. Check your my petrol heads.